Welcome back. Go ahead and suffocate the like button. Stick around until the end to see our next disturbing story you can't afford to miss. Elaine had always been skeptical about online dating, but after hearing several of her friends' success stories, she decided to give Tinder a try. She swiped through profiles, the monotony broken by occasional bursts of excitement when she found someone promising. That's when she stumbled upon Mark's profile. He was charming, with a captivating smile and a bio that hinted at his adventurous spirit and love for literature, two of her own passions. After matching, they quickly dove into deep, engaging conversations. He was articulate and witty, and soon they were texting late into the night about everything from their favorite books to their dreams of traveling the world. Mark seemed perfect, almost too good to be true, and after a week of constant messaging, they decided to meet. They agreed to a date at a cozy, little-known cafe that Mark suggested. Elaine felt a flutter of excitement mixed with the usual pre-date nerves as she prepared for the evening. However, she couldn't shake off a slight unease about meeting someone she'd only interacted with online. To calm her nerves, she shared her location with her best friend, Jessica, texting her the details of the date and agreeing to check in every hour. The cafe was charming and intimate, nestled on an old street that Elaine had never visited despite its proximity to her usual haunts. Mark was already there when she arrived, his smile just as warm in person. The date started wonderfully, they shared coffee and desserts, and their conversation flowed effortlessly. But as the evening wore on, Elaine started to feel uneasy. Mark's questions began to probe deeper, his interest in her personal life intensifying in a way that made her uncomfortable. He asked about her family, her past relationships, and her daily routines, his gaze too intense as he took in every word. When she tried to steer the conversation towards less personal topics, he would circle back, his curiosity unyielding. Feeling increasingly anxious, Elaine excused herself to go to the restroom, taking her phone to message Jessica. That's when she noticed she had no service. Odd, since she had full bars outside. The walls must be thicker than I thought, she reasoned, trying not to let her discomfort get the better of her. Back at the table, she decided to cut the evening short. As she made her excuses, Mark's demeanor changed. His warm smile faded, replaced by a cold, hard expression she hadn't seen before. He insisted on walking her home, his tone no longer a suggestion, but a firm insistence that sent a chill down her spine. Elaine, now genuinely afraid, insisted she would take a cab instead. As they stepped out of the cafe, she was relieved to see her phone service return. She quickly texted Jessica, her fingers trembling. But before she could send the message, Mark grabbed her phone. His grip was tight, his eyes no longer charming, but chilling. Why the rush, Elaine? We're just getting to know each other, he said, his voice low and menacing. At that moment, Elaine realized her initial unease had been a warning. The charming man from Tinder had a darker side, one that he had hidden behind his captivating profile and engaging texts. As she struggled to retrieve her phone, her mind raced for ways to escape. The street was dark. The cozy cafes and boutiques now closed for the night. She needed to get away, but Mark stood between her and the brightly lit main avenue. The story of Elaine's Tinder date had taken a dark turn, and she knew she had to act quickly if she were to escape the night unharmed. The charming facade of the cafe street now seemed a facade for something more sinister, as if the night itself was conspiring with Mark. Elaine's heart pounded as she assessed her situation. She needed to create a distraction, anything to break Mark's intense focus and give her a chance to escape. In a sudden move, she pretended to stumble, her body swaying as if she were about to fall. Instinctively, Mark reached out to steady her, loosening his grip on her phone just enough for her to snatch it back. Thank you. I just need to call my friend now. She's expecting me, Elaine said, injecting a forced calmness into her voice as she edged away from him, putting a little distance between them. She quickly unlocked her phone and dialed 911, her fingers trembling so much that she almost dropped it again. Mark realized what she was doing and lunged towards her, his expression contorted in anger. But Elaine was quicker. She dodged him and sprinted towards the main avenue, her phone pressed to her ear. Behind her, she could hear Mark's heavy footsteps pounding on the pavement, his breath ragged as he chased after her. 911, what's your emergency? came the dispatcher's voice. I'm being chased by someone. I'm near... Elaine gasped struggling to get the words out as she ran. Stay on the line, the dispatcher said, her voice calm and steady. Help is on the way. Elaine darted through the streets, 
her only goal to keep moving, to put as much distance as possible between herself and Mark. She could hear him shouting her name from behind, his voice laced with a chilling mix of fury and desperation. Suddenly, a police siren wailed in the distance, growing louder as it approached. Relief flooded through Elaine just as she saw the flashing lights of a police car rounding the corner. She waved her arms frantically, catching the attention of the officers. The police car screeched to a halt beside her, and two officers quickly stepped out. As they approached, Elaine pointed breathlessly towards Mark, who had slowed down, realizing the situation was out of his control. The officers apprehended him swiftly, handcuffing him as he shouted incoherently. Elaine collapsed to the ground, her entire body shaking from the adrenaline and terror of the night's events. One of the officers knelt beside her, offering reassurances and a blanket to shield her from the cold. As Mark was led away, his eyes met Elaine's one last time. The look he gave her was one she would never forget, a mixture of malice and thwarted intent. It was a look that promised this wasn't over, that he felt this was just a temporary setback. After giving her statement to the police, Elaine was escorted home by an officer. The house felt cold and empty as she stepped inside, the security she once felt in her own home now tainted by the night's events. She double-checked all the locks and finally allowed herself to collapse into bed, though she knew sleep would be elusive. The next morning brought no relief. Calls from concerned friends and family were a reminder of the ordeal, and her phone became a source of anxiety rather than comfort. But it was a voicemail left on her phone while she was sleeping that chilled her to the core. It was from an unknown number, and the voice was unmistakably Mark's. Distorted, but unmistakable, under the electronic alteration. You think you're safe now, Elaine, but I'll always be watching. Always. The police traced the call, but it led nowhere, originating from a burner phone that was soon found discarded miles away from the city. Elaine was left with the terrifying knowledge that Mark had somehow made arrangements to ensure she wouldn't forget him, even if he was behind bars. The story of Elaine's Tinder date had ended for the world, but for her, the shadows lingered in every corner of her life, the whispers of the night reminding her that some horrors don't end when the sun rises. Samantha had always been cautious about online dating, but after several months of her friends raving about their experiences on Hinge, she decided to give it a shot. Hinge's promise of designed to be deleted appealed to her, suggesting that maybe she'd find someone worth stepping out of the virtual world for. After setting up her profile with care, she started interacting with a few matches, but one stood out more than the others, Thomas. Thomas was articulate, with a seemingly perfect blend of charm and intellect. His messages were thoughtful, and he shared a lot of Samantha's interests in art and music, which made their conversations flow easily. After a couple of weeks of messaging, they decided to meet for coffee at a quaint little cafe Samantha loved. Their first date was a dream. Thomas was even more charismatic in person, and they spent hours talking, laughing, and sharing stories. By the end of the date, Samantha felt a connection she hadn't felt in years. They continued to see each other, each date making Samantha more certain that she had found something special. However, as they started seeing each other more regularly, Samantha began to notice odd inconsistencies in Thomas's stories. He would occasionally mention places he had supposedly traveled, only to later speak about them as if they were unfamiliar. When she brought it up, Thomas would laugh it off, saying he was just terrible with details. These small red flags didn't deter her at first, but her discomfort grew when Thomas started insisting on more secluded venues for their dates, places out of the city, often shrouded in nature. He said he preferred privacy, away from the prying eyes of a bustling city. Samantha, caught up in the romance, initially found these adventures exciting, but she couldn't shake off a growing sense of isolation each time they went further away from what was familiar. One weekend, Thomas suggested a day trip to an old cabin in the woods that he said belonged to a friend. He described it as a perfect getaway, where they could enjoy each other's company without any distractions. Despite her reservations, Samantha agreed swayed by his enthusiasm and her own feelings for him. The drive to the cabin took a couple of hours, the roads growing more winding and the woods thicker as they traveled. Thomas was a perfect gentleman throughout the drive, playing her favorite music and making her laugh. However, when they arrived, Samantha's unease spiked. The cabin was much more isolated than she had imagined, nestled deep within the forest, far from any other signs of life. As they settled in, 
Thomas became increasingly assertive, his demeanor changing subtly. He seemed more intense, more insistent in his affections, which made Samantha uncomfortable. She decided to tell Thomas that she wanted to go home, that she wasn't feeling well, and the isolation of the cabin was making her anxious. Thomas's face darkened at her words. We just got here, Sam. You're overreacting, he said, his tone more stern than she had ever heard. Let's just enjoy the weekend. I promise you'll feel better, Samantha insisted, trying to keep her voice calm. But Thomas's behavior grew colder, more distant. He reluctantly agreed to leave the next morning, citing that driving back in the dark would be unsafe. That night, Samantha slept restlessly, the isolation of the cabin and Thomas's uncharacteristic change in behavior filling her with dread. And that in the dead of night, she awoke to the sound of the cabin door closing. Sitting up, she realized Thomas was not in the room. Pulling on a jacket, she stepped outside, where the moonlight barely pierced the thick canopy of the forest. The air was cold, filled with the rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. Thomas, she called out, her voice barely above a whisper. No answer. The forest seemed to swallow up her words. Heart pounding, she realized how vulnerable she was, far from anyone else, far from help. The story of their romantic getaway was taking a sinister turn. And as Samantha stood alone in the moonlit silence, she understood the true danger of her situation. And th the realization that Thomas had brought her here with intentions she hadn't fathomed crashed over her like a wave, chilling her to the bone. As she stood there, trying to decide her next move, the forest around her seemed to close in, and the true horror of her predicament began to unfold. Samantha's mind raced as she considered her options. The chilling realization that she might not be safe with Thomas pushed her toward the decision to leave, even if it meant wandering alone in the dark, unfamiliar woods. Gathering her courage, she quickly went back inside to grab her phone and keys from the cabin. But her search turned frantic when she discovered both were missing. Panic surged through her as she checked and rechecked the usual spots, her breathing becoming rapid. The thought that Thomas might have taken them to prevent her from leaving sent a fresh wave of terror through her. With no other choice, Samantha decided she would have to find her way out on foot. She remembered passing a small gas station a few miles back and hoped she could reach it by dawn. Just as she was about to open the front door to leave, it swung inward abruptly and Thomas stepped inside. His expression was unreadable in the dim moonlight filtering through the windows, his eyes shadowed and cold. Going somewhere? He asked, a chilling calmness to his voice. Samantha backed away, her heart pounding. Thomas, please, I just want to go home, she pleaded, her voice trembling. Thomas closed the door behind him, locking it with a deliberate click that echoed ominously in the silent cabin. You are home, Samantha. We are away from everything here. It's just you and me, just how it should be, he said, his tone unsettlingly serene. Samantha felt the walls closing in as Thomas advanced. She knew she had to escape before he could reach her. In a desperate move, she threw a lamp at him, momentarily startling him and dodging past to run into the bedroom. She locked the door behind her, heart racing as she heard him slowly approaching from the other side. Sam, let's not make this difficult, Thomas called out, his voice too calm. The doorknob rattled gently at first, then more insistently. Panicking, Samantha scanned the room for an escape route or a weapon. Her eyes landed on a small window. It was a tight fit, but it was her only chance. She threw open the window and started to climb through, the cold night air hitting her as she struggled to pull herself out. As she made her final push to escape, Thomas broke through the door. He lunged for her legs, grasping her ankle with a strong grip. Samantha kicked wildly, her fear lending her strength, until finally she felt his grip loosen. She tumbled out of the window, landing hard on the ground below. Ignoring the pain, Samantha scrambled to her feet and ran into the forest, not daring to look back. Behind her, she could hear Thomas shouting, his voice intermingling with the rustling of the trees as if the forest itself was alive with his anger. Samantha ran until her lungs burned and her legs ached. She didn't stop until she reached the road, her body and mind pushed to their limits. By the time the first car stopped to help her, the first light of dawn was breaking over the horizon. The police were called and an investigation began, but Thomas vanished without a trace, leaving behind only the chilling memories of that night and the haunting words he had spoken. Samantha was safe, but the scars of that night lingered, a constant reminder of the terror she had endured. 
The cabin in the woods remained empty, standing silently amid the whispering trees, as if waiting for its next inhabitants. Liza was relatively new to the world of online dating when she downloaded Bumble, intrigued by its promise of letting women make the first move. After a series of unremarkable conversations and fleeting connections, she matched with someone who seemed genuinely different, Evan. His profile was articulate and charming, adorned with photos of him hiking, at book readings, and playing with his golden retriever. They hit it off immediately, finding common ground in their love for indie films and Russian literature. Their messaging quickly turned into long, nightly phone calls, and after two weeks of digital courtship, they decided to meet in person. Evan suggested a quaint, out-of-the-way coffee shop he claimed was his absolute favorite spot. Liza agreed, excited but cautious as always. She shared her plans with her roommate and shared her live location, just in case. The coffee shop was nestled in a less frequented part of town, with rustic charm and a cozy ambiance. Evan was already there when Liza arrived, smiling broadly. He was just as handsome in person, and the initial awkwardness soon gave way to comfortable conversation. They talked for hours, the cafe's quiet buzz of background activity providing a soothing backdrop. As the cafe began to close, Evan suggested a walk in the nearby park to continue their conversation. Liza hesitated momentarily. She knew the park was somewhat isolated and it was getting late, but Evan's kind demeanor and the fact that they were having such a good time quieted her concerns. The park was dimly lit, with only the moon and sparse street lamps illuminating the path. They talked as they walked, but slowly, Liza started to feel uneasy. Evan's questions began to probe deeper into her personal life, her past relationships, her family, even asking about her fears and anxieties. Liza attempted to redirect the conversation to lighter topics, but Evan persisted. His tone was no longer playful, but insistent, almost aggressive. This shift unsettled Liza, and she suggested that it might be time to head back. Evan's expression darkened. Why? He asked, his voice low. I thought you were enjoying our time together. I am, Liza replied, trying to keep her voice steady. But it's late, and I have an early day tomorrow. Evan laughed, a sound that didn't quite reach his eyes. It's not that late. Let's just go a bit further. There's a spot I want to show you. Despite her growing apprehension, Liza followed, not wanting to seem rude or paranoid. As they walked deeper into the park, the lights grew fewer and the trees thicker. The pathway twisted away from the main park area and into a secluded section that Liza didn't recognize from her previous visits. Suddenly, Evan grabbed her arm, pulling her to a stop. Here we are, he said, gesturing vaguely into the dark. Liza's heart raced as she looked around. They were far from any other parkgoers, isolated in a shadowy grove surrounded by dense foliage. She tried to pull her arm away, but Evan's grip was tight. What's here? She asked, trying to keep her voice calm. Just us, Evan replied, his tone chillingly calm as he stepped closer, blocking her path back toward the lighted areas of the park. At that moment, Liza realized the serious danger she might be in. Her mind raced, considering her options for escape, her fingers inching towards the pepper spray she carried in her pocket. The story of Liza and Evan's first date had taken a dark turn, leaving her trapped in a secluded part of the park with a man who was no longer charming, but threatening. As she calculated her next move, the peaceful night air seemed to grow colder, the shadows around them deepening into ominous silhouettes. Liza's heart pounded in her chest as Evan's once kind eyes now seemed to narrow into slits of malice. The playful charm he exhibited earlier was completely gone, replaced by an unnerving seriousness. Why the rush? He pressed, his voice low and menacing. I thought we were connecting, Liza. Trying to mask her panic, Liza responded with forced calmness. Yes, we were, Evan, but I really need to get home. She could feel the cold metal of the pepper spray through the fabric of her pocket, a small reassurance against the fear that gripped her. Evan's grip tightened, his smile twisting into a sneer. No, you're going to stay here with me, he insisted. His other hand reached out, grabbing her other arm pinning her in place with a strength that shocked her. In a burst of adrenaline, Liza reacted. She managed to pull the pepper spray from her pocket, unleashing a stream directly into Evan's eyes. He howled in pain and released her, staggering back and clutching his face. Seizing the moment, Liza turned and ran as fast as she could back towards the lighted path. 
her breath ragged with fear and exertion. Behind her, she could hear Evan cursing and stumbling through the underbrush, but she didn't dare look back. She burst onto the main path and kept running, her eyes scanning for any sign of help. Finally, she saw a couple walking their dog and ran towards them, screaming for help. The couple quickly intervened, one of them dialing 911 as Liza clung to them, shaking uncontrollably. The police arrived within minutes, and Liza gave them a quick statement, describing Evan and the direction he had fled. Officers immediately searched the area, and after a tense hour, they apprehended Evan, trying to leave the park from another exit. He was arrested and taken into custody, still squinting painfully from the effects of the pepper spray. Shaken but safe, Liza was escorted home by one of the officers. The next few days were a blur of police statements, calls from concerned friends and family, and her own troubled reflections. She replayed the night over and over, each time feeling a mix of relief and horror at how close she had come to a different outcome. The experience left her deeply shaken, and she swore off online dating, no longer seeing it as a safe way to meet people. Instead, she focused on healing and reconnecting with friends and family who supported her through the aftermath. Meanwhile, Evan faced serious charges. It turned out that Liza wasn't the first he had lured to a secluded spot, but she was the first to escape and report him. His arrest led to an investigation that uncovered a pattern of predatory behavior stretching back years. The story of Liza's bumble date spread among the local community, becoming a cautionary tale about the risks of online dating. It reminded everyone that behind charming profiles and pleasant text exchanges, real dangers could lurk, hidden until it was almost too late. As for Liza, she learned to trust her instincts more than ever, grateful that she had escaped to tell her story and help protect others from a similar fate. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video 